I'm Enoch Dew, and this time on Retro Revive, I'm building the Ultimate Windows 98 gaming PC. Before I get into the hardware, I just want to make it clear that I am not going for a period accurate build. Most of these pieces are taken from the tail end of when Windows 98 drivers were supported. First of all, I chose this motherboard because obviously it has Windows 98 drivers. It has two PCI slots, a PCI Express slot, and while Windows 98 doesn't support it, it's good to have. Four SATA connectors, an IDE header, and a floppy controller. Onboard Ethernet, USB 2.0, PS2 serial and parallel ports in case I want to connect any hardware from the period. And the seller sold it to me refurbished with a brand new battery, so that's convenient. The processor in this system is a Pentium 4 630, running at 3 GHz. This is super overkill for a Windows 98 PC, and a lot of people would argue that it kills compatibility with speed-sensitive DOS games. But most high-end Windows 98 PC builds that are period correct I see are Pentium 3 builds, and those are kind of beyond speed-sensitive DOS games anyway. So I'm just not going to try to attempt to hit those. I have 512 megabytes of RAM because that's the maximum amount Windows 98 natively supports. For storage, I'm using a 128 gigabyte solid state drive because it's blazing fast. It'll make load times so short. And 128 gigabytes is the maximum hard drive size that Windows 98 will support. For my graphics card, I'm rocking a GeForce 6200 with 512 megabytes of onboard memory. I chose this graphics card because it's the most powerful PCI graphics card I could find with Windows 98 drivers. For my sound card, I have a Sound Blaster 5.1 Live, SB0100. I chose this because it's a PCI sound card and for its Sound Blaster 16 emulation. And of course it has a game port so I can use those old joysticks. The Cougar Spike case may not be great for modern SLI setups, but it will live on. For media, I have a DVD burner, which obviously supports CD as well, a five and a quarter inch floppy drive, and a three and a half inch floppy drive. And the floppy drive controller only supports one at a time, so I just have to unplug one and plug in the other. And for my monitor, I have a ViewSonic VA912B. It runs at a resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 75 hertz.
Now, setting up the software on this was a pain in the butt. The first thing I did was I went into the BIOS and I set SATA into legacy mode and poof, my Blu-ray drive and solid state were perfect. And I also disabled onboard audio and the serial and parallel ports to free up some resources. I installed Windows 98 and the system was super unstable. I got blue screens of death all the time and the USB drivers would just lock up and the keyboard and mouse would stop working. <gasps> Upon investigation I discovered that there were seven or eight BIOS updates between the BIOS version I had and the latest one. And so I updated that, and that seemed to stabilize everything. So the graphics card drivers um, were pretty interesting to get running right. At first I installed the latest version of the Forceware drivers, version 81.98, would cause some errors on shutdown and would act kind of funky. And so I installed 77.72 and that was really stable. I installed the Windows 98 unofficial service pack, DirectX 9C, Kernel X, and Internet Explorer 6 to get it all as up to date as I could. Then I had some more issues with the graphics card drivers. It seemed to work in everything except it could not initialize DirectX and so I tried reinstalling DirectX and that didn't work. I tried reinstalling the 77.72 drivers and that didn't work. I installed the 81.98 drivers and that did work but I still had those weird issues on shutdown so I reinstalled the 77.72 drivers and then everything was fine and DirectX initialized. I don't know why this is but it works and I'm happy it does. I installed the network drivers for the motherboard and they worked perfectly. And then I installed the sound card drivers. I have the original CDs for the drivers and they installed fine, except when it got to the Sound Blaster 16 emulation, I got a blue screen of death. And upon reboot, in the system manager, it says that there are no hardware conflicts, but it has been deactivated because it causes the system to crash. When I try to initialize, the drivers from MS-DOS mode, I get some errors about my memory configuration. And looking online, the sound card seems to be pretty particular about how you set up your memory loadout in DOS. And I don't know how this works. I've tried some different configurations online, and I still seem to run into this error. And if somebody out there could help me with this to get the Sound Blaster 16 emulation working, I would be so grateful. And as for gaming on it, it is awesome. It runs every game from the Windows 98 era and some above at max settings at the full resolution of this monitor, no problem.
Stranger, I'm not surprised to see your kind here. Beware about demons and beasts. There were only two games I couldn't get working, and that was Knights of the Old Republic, which came out after Windows 98, but it still has Windows 98 support. I have this weird graphical problem where the polygons for some of the characters' heads are all exploded out. And I couldn't find this problem anywhere else online. It does sound like it might be a hardware issue with the graphics card, but it runs all other 3D games perfectly, so I'm not really sure what's up there. And also, Star Trek Deep Space Nine Dominion Wars just straight up won't start up. And this seems to be a pretty glitchy game and has problems on other people's systems as well, so I don't know. So time to wrap this up. What I love about this system is it is so snappy, it is so responsive. That solid state makes load times like nothing. I also love that I have tons and tons of space on this solid state drive. 128 gigs is huge on Windows 98. I remember our old computer had a 3.2 gigabyte hard drive. I've installed all the games I have on hand, and I hardly put a dent in it. I had to organize my taskbar by genre so that I could find my games. And obviously the CPU isn't going to be a bottleneck for any of these games, and the graphics card tackles them all excellently. And uh, what's not so perfect about it? is obviously the Sound Blaster emulation. I really want to get that working so that I can hear what's going on in DOS games. And if any of you guys know how to fix that, please reach out to me. I would love that so much. The other thing is uh, my five and a quarter inch floppy drive. I'm not even sure if it works or not because the only disks I have to try are high density disks, but as it turns out, it is not a high density five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Something else that could be better is this monitor, because it's at a weird aspect ratio. It's at a 5x4 aspect ratio, where most games from this period are a 4x3, so it has to stretch them a little bit. It's not as bad as going from 4x3 to 9x16, but it's still noticeable, and there's some interpolation going on, just because it has to handle a wide range of resolutions. And for this reason, I think a CRT monitor would be ideal. Though I don't really have the space for one right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. I love this PC so much. And I'm excited to do some more with it. Uh, tell me what you'd like to see from this. And how I can improve on it. As always, I have a written blog on my website at retrorevive.enicdo.com. I'll host the drivers I used in this video. I'm going to go play some more Windows 98 games.